commercial launch. Please welcome on stage the president and CEO of Globe Telecom, Mr. Ernest Koo. Good afternoon. Deputy Secretary Rodolfo Salalima, Senator Sanayangara, Globe and Ayala Group Chairman Jaime Zobel de Ayala. Good afternoon to all. We also want to welcome our partners in the SC, SEA US uh, Cable Consortium. Uh, we have partners here from uh, RTI, the US, uh, GTA of Guam, Telen of Indonesia, and of course also our maintenance partner here from BSC, and their owners are also here. All of that have made this milestone uh, really possible. This is truly a milestone for Globe because it's one of many firsts. This is the first cable uh, that runs counter to the typical route that is taken by most cables emanating from Southeast Asia. It's the you know earthquake-prone Tokyo leg or, or, or route, the one that goes to the Taiwan Straits. Some go to the Malaysian waters. This one particularly goes through the Philippines via Davao, also a first for us because we are now uh, landing this cable in Mindanao for the very, very first time. Right? It's our very first cable out there. A lot of our cable stations, or most of them, or all of them, are, in fact, are actually in Luzon. Right? So it really changes the game uh, for the country. You know, not only that, it gives us also now significant latency in an area of the country that is you know, now becoming a boom town, which is Davao, right? boom town of our president. Right? Um, so he can credit Globe for the vision. We knew he was going to be president, so we landed it there <laughs> five years ago. I'm not just kidding. That's just serendipity. Um, a lot of this is also very important as we lead the Philippines into first world internet territory. And additional capacity is actually required because our internet growth in the Philippines is really astounding. You know, in, in last year alone, from first half to first half, we grew our traffic by 85%. We went from 151 petabytes in the first half of 2016. Well, that same period in 2017, we went to 280 petabytes in terms of traffic. And that's only with about 67% smartphone penetration. And we expect that to continue to go up and reach a pro approximate 100% penetration by 2018. This is given the fact that cheaper and cheaper handsets are coming into the market. And they just announced a $50 and set with full voltage capability. And I'm sure those, those types of activities are gonna drive the price of handsets down, thus spurn the adoption of LTE handsets into the market. Also to date, we've launched 3,600 LTE sites and are going to increase this by 60% by at the end of the year. Doing so along the 700, 1,800, 2,600 frequencies of LTE, is sure to increase the amount of traffic that goes through there. The other thing that this is really important to us is we have added another traffic generator to the, to the Globe network, and that's now Globe's focus on the home. Having now achieved leadership in the mobile sector, we are now focusing our efforts on further improving average speeds in the Philippines by connecting Filipino homes to high-speed internet, and Globe classifies high speed as 10 Mbps and above. You know, the, the Philippines, it has been a laggard, if you would, in terms of the fixed line infrastructure because of our aging copper that's been in the ground for many, many years. Telcos like us have really focused on building the mobile infrastructure first and are now deploying fiber and upgrading a lot of our copper infrastructure to BDSL to, to deliver improved speeds to the households in the Philippines. You know, given the advent of use cases like video streaming, which is now coming online in a very big way. You know, today, you know, we can glad to say we have now have 1.3 million uh, broadband subs in Globe and growing at about an 8 to 10 percent clip per annum. This is part of our continued effort or our goal to actually reach 2 million households by the year 2020 with high-speed connections. Let's not leave out the very important angle of business. Businesses should also benefit from this. The Philippines has a burgeoning uh, BPO sector and now we've added a new and viable area, which is Mindanao. You know, given the connectivity that's going to be available there, and the thrust by the government to moving things out of Metro Manila, I think this enables a whole new set of uh, people to be employed by this very important industry. So, um, it's really important also to note that the Philippines um, telecom sector is one that is a hot bed of investment. 
you know, contrary to some proper popular belief out there that we don't invest money, Globe actually and our competitor are actually one of the highest in terms of capex to revenue ratios out there uh, in terms of investment. I think Globe this year will be close to 34%, meaning we will invest 34% of our revenues back into our network, which is really, really high for this year. You know, and that is that means on top of the $80 million that we've spent for SEA US, we will be investing probably close to $800 million more onto our network in this year. You know, and that's one year. Imagine we've been doing this for several years. And I think given the fact and the profile of use of mobile data as well as home data in this country, it's going to go on for a while. So it really is important to keep this country competitive. And we are sworn and we are bound by our duty in this country to keep on improving the internet. I cannot close without saying thank you to the GLOBE team that made this possible. I think I have to start with a gentleman actually who conceived of this and actually worked with, I think, RTI, Russ, to make this all possible. And he actually shepherded this through for the board approval. That's Mr. Hilhenio, who worked on this five years ago. And of course, uh, Arlene Valorina and her team, who have been, I call her the cable, submarine cable queen of globe. Right? Everybody knows her in the industry. Again, fine, fine job of making this happen and ensuring that, by the way, this cable is now lit up and now carrying traffic as of last week, ahead of schedule by a month. Right? So again, I, I just want to thank all of you. I just want to share this proud moment with you, a proud moment in Philippine telecommunications, and one that again signals our entry into first world internet. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ernest Kuhn. As GLOBE brings world-class quality service to the Philippines, a testimony of the international standard of the CEA US cable will also be shared with us tonight. Everyone, please welcome the CEO of Wholesale and International Business of PT Telecom, Mr. Abdus Somad Arif. Everybody, uh, distinguished guests, special Mr. Minister, and also all management of group and also partners here that are from RTI and also from uh, GDI and also from uh, Telkom Indonesia Group. So, first, big congratulations to Globe. This is a big step, of course, together with us as a partner of Globe. We are very proud to be partner. So in the west part of CUS, there are two big company as a partner, Globe and Telkom Indonesia Group. So we do hope that this event will be launched in a minute. It's our together step to make or to change the submarine business, especially in South Asia, and of course, uh, then bigger step to the world. So thank you for inviting us, and we do hope we can cooperate together in a better way in the future. And secondly, Congratulations also for all the consortium of CUS that already finished all the hard work and it is faster than schedule. So big congratulations for all of us and I'm optimistic, we are all optimistic to reach together in collaboration. I can mention three be successful. First, being better in quality of service for the customers. Second, together we can deliver or we can grow our companies, our region, our country, be bigger because of this new opportunity, this new infrastructure. And last but not least, together we can make it broader 
in the type of services in the business for all, all, all of us, also for our country. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Paul Group. Thank you very much, Mr. Abdul Samad Abri. The Southeast Asia United States cable system is a milestone not just for the Philippines, but for the whole world. To know more, let's all watch this. Mama said I'm growing up very fast, and that things around me are moving even faster. She said that one day I'll create a better tomorrow, a better world, a world full of hope where everyone can be the best every day a world full of happy people who talk to each other and listen to good stories a world full of life where people can work together play together and share the things they love with others a world that feels like home because everyone is family and no one is left behind because we can all be fast strong and awesome. A world where everyone can find reasons to smile. A world we all deserve. Every kid, every boy, every girl, every mom, dad, brother, sister, Tito, or Lola. Every Filipino living as one. Mama said the future is coming fast. She even said the future is here because it's that fast. So I asked Mama, but is it faster than me? And now, please welcome on stage the Secretary of the Department of Information and Communications Technology, Honorable Secretary Rodolfo Salalima. I have uh, a prepared speech for uh, this evening's gathering. But uh, on this occasion, I wish to describe my speech. This morning, I was with uh, the Ayala group of companies, and then I also delivered my speech. I was at home because I came from the Ayala group of companies, and I was seconded to Globe, and I am proud that I came from this institution. During my confirmation, one of the critical issues that was asked of me was, you came from the public sector. Specifically, the question here is, you came from the telecommunications sector. In fact, you were the leader, the lead attorney of the telecoms industry in regard to their interests in telecommunications. And they asked me, don't you have a conflict of interests in the event that we appoint you as the Secretary of the Department of Information and Communication Technology? And I said to the very respectable lady member of the Commission and I said, Mom, with all due respect, before you became a congresswoman, like me, you also came from the public sector. And when you joined the public sector, like you, I also came from the public private sector, and I am now joining the, the public service. Mom, I said, there is no one in this country who has a monopoly of patriotism. And I said, I am a lawyer, Mom. I know my oath. And I know 
were to praise my heart once I become a public servant. We have with us here a very kind, a very helpful public servant in so far as he has been of help, particularly to the Department of Information and Communications Technology in regard our countryside development. We have here with East a leader in the industry, my former principal, uh, Jaime Augusto Zoberti Ayala, who I normally call Jessa, not out of less respect, but because it is a dress of endearment and it is an address of respect precisely for our leader. The president, the CEO of GLOBE, has been my principal at GLOBE Telecom. To the guests from US, from Indonesia, from Guam, from the investors into this consortium, other guests, ladies and gentlemen. About a year ago, the President in his State of the Nation address said, we have here a new department, the DACT. And he said, I direct you to establish three very important projects which would have an impact on the citizens of the country because telecommunication service is now the enabler as far as growth as far as success in the country's concern. I, he said, direct you to establish three things. The broadband plan for the country, Wi-Fi, and the portal plan. And I said, why is the president that much interested in us building all these projects? I answered this as a lawyer and I said, remember this, and I am addressing this to the consortium building this up. If we remember, in the 1948 Decla Universal Declaration of Human Rights, on the importance of telecommunications which subsume broadcasts from the international definition of telecommunications. There is a provision in section 20 and 21 of that Universal Declaration of Human Rights issued by the UN General Assembly which said that every person has an equal right to access public service in the country where he was born or is born. Public service contemplates telecommunications, and so we say telecommunications service is, or the access thereto, is a universal right of every man. When I was representing the Philippines in the International Telecommunications Union as a private lawyer and helping the government, I was handed a copy of the 2012 resolution of the UN Council on Human Rights. And in that declaration, it says the right to telecommunicate or the right to communicate as an incident of the universal freedom of expression is a basic human right. I am glad that we have Indonesian friends who are investors and are present here this evening. Kindly examine the ASEAN ICT Master Plan of 2015. There are four objectives of that Master Plan. And of the four objectives, three, the first three, it speaks about ICT, it speaks about telecommunications. 
the first objective of the ASEAN Master Plan is to employ ICT as the engine of growth, as the enabler of growth in the ASEAN region. The DICT was established precisely, perhaps unintentionally, for that purpose. Number two objective of the ASEAN Master Plan says that ASEAN, the region, must become a global hub for ICT technology. And number three, they said, by reason of objective one and two, we need to raise the quality of life of the ASEAN people. This kind of project is a way of proving the quality of life, not only of the Filipino people, but also the ASEAN people in the world. And if we may remind everyone, our constitution also provides in the general provisions in the 1997 constitution, there is a provision there not found in an earlier old constitution which in some says the Philippines shall subscribe to a policy towards or in favor of the establishment of physical infrastructure. At the DACT, I said, you are not in the DOTR, you are in the DACT when you call our infrastructure. Please do not mention that word because our physical infrastructure is the venue, the medium through which information flows. And I say, if you are at the DACT, use infra infrastructure rather than infrastructure. And in that constitution, it says that our government must favor a policy towards the establishment of infrastructure, give at allowing the free flow of information, not only within the country, but information coming out of the country and into our country and information going out of the country as an incident of man's universal right to freedom of expression. These projects assigned to me in a year's time without the benefit of a formal a structural organization we have launched in some two we have completed. My mandate as your DICP secretary, the first secretary of the country, is a mandate which I call Mission Impossible. Because there are a lot of problems affecting or has an adverse impact on telecommunications service in the country. People complained of internet service in our country because they said it is costly. And number one, it is slow. As an experiment, as a prototype for us going nationwide, this May and June for a period of one month. I was ordered by Malacanya to improve the telecommunication service in the entire stretch of EDSA, a stretch of 24 kilometers from Balintawak up to Bawa, passing through Taft. And in that one month period, we break, we broke the world record. The global standard now for internet speed is 10 to 11 megabytes per second. Last year, it was five megabytes per second. At EXA, in a span of one month, with the help of the private telcos, who has to work 
at the dead during the dead of the night. Some sending your men, 600 of them every night, just to fast track the speeding up of internet. We are now clocking a minimum speed of 88 megabytes per second. And that is the minimum, this highest speed we are clocking at 100 to 200 megabytes per second. And I said, there is nothing mission impossible if all the stakeholders in my country will cooperate and work together towards realizing and solving what otherwise is mission impossible. To the Filipino people, therefore, I pledge that I will address your problems on internet nationwide, not only from the viewpoint of speed, but also from the viewpoint of access and from the viewpoint of affordability or costs. Wi-Fi is a component of the broadband and Wi-Fi is one way of making available to the Filipino people in the countryside for our people to have access to the services of the telcos where before our people do not have access to telcos. And I am glad to announce that Senator Angara is with me today because as a very kind, as a very helpful Senator, Last week, the Congress of the Philippines institutionalized legally the Wi-Fi project of my department by making it as a legal mandate, by enacting a law supporting and funding the Wi-Fi project of DICT. And more than that, there is a provision in that Wi-Fi law which says that the matter of issuing permits by the local government units, by everybody, the agencies of government in the private indices, the permits, which runs to a month minimum to a year or no permit at all, they must be granted in a period of seven days only. So to all of you, let us clap our hands because of our victory from the Senate. I would end by thanking, by thanking the investors from the Philippines, let me globe, from Indonesia, from Guam, and from the USA because I feel that this cable landing gateway from the Southeast Asia to the U.S. will come a long way into further improving telecommunications service in the country. And in improving the service of telecommunications in the country, we in the future will be able to complete and satisfy the needs of the Filipino people and we will be able to satisfy and address the needs and the rights of the Filipino people and the people outside of the Philippines in realizing the right to telecommunicate which is not only a universal right under the UN Charter but also a universal right under the UN Council on Human Rights. So to all the investors, to Globe, to the representatives of the companies from Indonesia, from Guam, and from the US, thank you so much. To all of us today, good day, and God bless us all. Thank you very much, Honorable Secretary Rodolfo Salalima. And now we give the floor to the chairman of Globe Telecom, Mr. Jaime Augusto Zobel de Ayala.
Secretary Salalima, I think few uh, people uh, know the fact that uh, although Secretary Salalima has been an extraordinary leader in the private sector on telecommunication matters, others don't know that he also provided leadership for the country at the uh, International Telecommunication Union, the ITU, and has also uh, uh, represented uh, all our interests as a nation uh, for an extensive period of time in international setting. We're deeply grateful to Secretary Salalima for everything he's done and certainly for being uh, here with us today. Senator Angara, uh, uh, part of the next generation of youthful leadership in our country, we're deeply grateful, Senator, for your being uh, here as well. Uh, to Ernest Hill, uh, the drivers, I guess, of, of this business. I remember I was uh, looking back with Ernest and, uh, and Hill when all this started. It was back in 2012, I believe, uh, at the board that we approved this project. I'm just delighted uh, to see this coming uh, to fruition at this time. Um, a, a great deal has been said. We're deeply grateful to all the partners who are here uh, with us today. Um, this is just a, a wonderful, uh, fresh step uh, for us at Globe, but we couldn't have done it without of your uh, engagement. Ernest has also been very eloquent about the changes taking place in the industry and how this digitization of, uh, of these services is increasingly uh, in need, I guess, of, of capacity moving forward. Let me just mention in closing uh, the tremendous impact that this all has uh, on employment as we move over. Uh, Ernest uh, uh, covered uh, a great number of topics. Uh, uh, Rudy Salalima, Secretary Salalima, also mentioned the tremendous changes that are taking place that drives this. But, uh, I think I, I had a chance to meet some members from BPAP earlier, and uh, it's quite extraordinary uh, the kind of change and shift that has taken place in job generation and employment generation in our country, uh, thanks to the telecommunication network. Uh, uh, based on our conversations with the BPAP group, many who are represented uh, here today, I, I saw Lito earlier, um, with the roadmap uh, leading up to 2022, uh, they're looking at creating close to 2 million new jobs in the country. Um, and 7.6 million jobs outside uh, the BPAP and the business processing sector with additional revenues of over $40, million, $40 billion uh, to the country. All of this would not be possible without the kind of capacity that all of us are putting here uh, together for allowing even digital signals to continue traveling around the world in a cost-effective way. Um, this is a wonderful consortium, as Ernest pointed out. It's a, it's a brand new routing uh, that we have. It uh, adds diversity. Uh, to the kind of uh, linkages that we have with the global environment. We're delighted to be part of this consortium. And again, to all our partners who are here with us today, thank you uh, for allowing us to participate and for joining us in this undertaking. Thank you very much to all of you for joining us here today. Thank you very much, Mr. Jaime Augusto Zobel de Ayala. As part of Globe Telecom's commitment to nation building and delivering first world internet, we now present the Southeast Asia United States Submarine Cable System. Salalima. 
Mr. Abdul Soman Ari, and Mr. Ernest Koo. Mr. Ku on stage, please welcome the CEO of GTA, Mr. Andrew Bale, and the CEO of RTI, Mr. Russ Matulich. Mr. Arif, Mr. Koo, Mr. Andrew Gale, and Mr. Russ Methelich. Globe Telecom continues to empower and enable the nation. We continue to break walls, bridge thousands of islands, even countries, and go beyond borders, beyond the speed of life, and beyond limits, so we can go beyond business together. Once again, thank you for coming to Globe Business, One with the World, the CUS Commercial Lodge, have a great evening!